Well, I did it. Well, actually, we did it. We grew this YouTube channel to a thousand subscribers. Now let's take a look back at how we got here. In order to do that, we need to take a trip all the way back to, believe it or not, 2008. December 2008, exactly, is when I first signed up for a YouTube account. Before that, I had seen YouTube, been on YouTube, watched YouTube videos, and in December of 2008 for Christmas, I got a very small laptop. And the purpose of this laptop was to write because I wanted to be a writer and a storyteller. And the laptop had a webcam on it. And once I figured that out and figured out how to record videos with it, I decided that YouTube would be my next stop. Now, believe it or not, if you go years back on this channel, you will see that I posted a ton of things related to music, covers, original songs, remixes, all types of things. And that is actually where I got my start with YouTube and video and content creation. So YouTube for me was a means to blow my music up. So I signed up for an account December 2008 and I wouldn't actually make or post my first video until the summer of 2009. And the video is still up. So if you go all the way back, it's cover. It's not a great cover. I was still very new to learning the guitar and I think I was really too shy to sing on camera, but the video still exists. And from 2009 until 2013, I made just videos about music. Like I said, covers, uh, playing guitar, original songs, a few remixes, some rap related things. Music was a giant part of my life and I used YouTube as a vehicle to show that part of myself. In 2011 is when I entered my college years. I was a college freshman and I really started to form friendships with people who were starting to know what YouTube was and YouTube was developing a personality around this time. And I started to binge and fall in love with some of the, what I'm calling OG YouTubers of my time. Um, people like Nana Lou and Tessa Violet and Ophelia Dagger and Maria Watanabe. Um, shout out to all those creators, they're amazing. But these are the people that I started watching. And then in 2013, I was inspired by one of my friends and roommates to create a video that wasn't music related. That was more just talking to the camera. And so I tried my hand at it. Needless to say that if you spend years, literal years building up a channel focused on music and then you just throw in something random, uh, it doesn't exactly perform. So. I tried it a couple times, those videos are still up and they flopped. They honestly weren't good, but it did get me thinking about speaking to the camera instead of just using it as a vehicle to showcase my music. So from 2013 until 2015, 2016, I was sporadically posting uh, music related content and then every now and then I would interject these talking videos. I thought it was really interesting. I thought it was something that could develop into something else. And along this journey, I had been filming with uh, an old camcorder, uh, a laptop video camera, and then I got a Canon Elf 330 that shot in 1080, finally. And as I'm on this journey, I start to go down the rabbit hole of, well, how do I increase the quality? Okay, well, I already have microphones because I'm a musician and I have all the sound equipment, but how do I get that sound to match the video quality? And that's when I started going down the rabbit hole of then DSLR cameras. So I saved up a bunch of money and I still remember it like it was yesterday. It was right before Black Friday, November, 2015. I bought my first DSLR camera, the Canon T5. And that's a very defining moment in my my relationship with cameras and content and creating video and photo based content because that camera took my quality from just OK to exponentially greater. Now, when I got it, I had no idea how to use that camera at all. Uh, I remember the first like five or six days I was taking blurry pictures, trying to figure everything out. I had no idea what a kit lens was. Uh, I knew that you could change the lenses, but I had no idea how any of it worked. So I just took pictures. Now, 
from November 2015 until probably the summer of 2016, I learned how to use that camera. I learned how to take decent-ish photos and I really wanted to focus on the video capability. But one thing that was holding me back was the lack of a flip screen. And initially I got the T5 and I knew that it didn't have a flip screen, but I thought that I could manage. But anyone who has tried to film themselves with a camera without a flip screen knows how difficult that can be. And so I actually traded that camera. I returned it. No, I sold it. And then I ended up buying a Canon T3i and that was the camera that really catapulted my YouTube uh, career quality wise, camera quality wise, everything uh, related to cameras. So if you've been on YouTube since 2015, 2016, you'll know that that was the height of the hype of Casey Neistat. And with my newfound camera skills and my new camera, I decided to like everyone else on YouTube at that time to try my hand at vlogging. Now, my life was not exciting um, at all because I was working all day. So I would literally set up the camera, film myself working during the day, sometimes having lunch with my coworkers and friends, and then a little bit of whatever I was doing when I met my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, and that was it. That went on for about eight days. Uh, I have no idea how Casey was doing it or any of the other daily vloggers. Shout out props to them, but filming your life when you work a nine to five is difficult. It was also around this time where my quality of music was increasing. So I was starting to have videos do a little bit better, but I really still didn't have a strategy or a plan when it came to YouTube. It was more like, a, I just wanna make music. And so I'm gonna record this song post it on YouTube and hopefully it does something. I was not thinking about title structure or thumbnails or description or SEO tags. I wasn't thinking about any of that. And so whenever a video did take off, it was kind of like just a random act of surprise or something that got picked up by the algorithm. algorithm. There was no strategy to it. So if you're keeping up, I posted a bunch of stuff about music from about 2008 until really 2016 is when I slowed down. And then that three year gap of 2013 to 2016, I also started interjecting some of these talking videos. Um, and this is when things really start to shift for me. So up until this point, I had racked up about five to 600 ish subscribers, uh, mostly from the music days. And I thank you guys, if you're still rocking with me from the music days, uh, it has been an, an incredible wild ride up until this point. And so from, you know, 2016, this is a long gap, 2016 to probably 2021-ish, I stopped posting a lot of music stuff and I started really leaning into camera related content. Uh, there was something so magical about learning about cameras and using cameras and using them to document and tell stories that really, it really just like took a toll on me. Um, as, as someone who's always loved cameras and always used whatever camera I had available, it was something special about upping the quality and learning the different techniques and the styles and things like that, that really catapulted and changed the trajectory of my YouTube career. So I would say from 2020, 2021 to 2023, I really slowed down posting. The world changed. We all know what happened in 2020. And during that time period, there were spikes and seasons where I tried to post, but nothing consistent, nothing stuck. It was just really difficult for me. And so I really slowed down a lot. And truthfully, I think I only posted like two or three videos in 2023. And only like and only like four or five in 2022. So all of that changed in December of 2023. In December of 2023, I made the decision to purchase another camera that has been life changing, and that is the Sony ZV E10. And I also made a very conscious decision that I would post a video on YouTube every week in 2024. And I did so good for the majority of this year. Year's not over. And I would say I've probably missed about three videos, three weeks. I'm not making excuses, but you know, life happens and things come up and sometimes you're just tired or uh, things just happen. And so there, I've missed about three videos this year. And I would say three out of, you know, 
this entire year is pretty good for me. But the point that I'm trying to make is I started this year with about 672 subscribers. I actually checked it. And we are, as of the time of recording this video, up to 1,009 subscribers. So thank you so much for all of that. So what has gotten us to this point? Well, a lot of the subscribers and views actually came fairly early, I would say. In January, February, I posted a video that still to this day is my highest view date to date. It racked up 1500 views in a day, which was incredible at the time. I like to call it beginner's luck. And it was a gear related video. And from then until about July, I posted every week and I noticed a trend that the gear related videos seemed to do better and perform better and get picked up. Now, this could be because people are searching for those things, or it could be because camera people love videos about gear. But somewhere in between there, I made the comment that I did not want this to be a gear review channel or a solely gear review channel. And I still hold that notion. Um, you know, making videos based on camera gear is difficult when you don't have the means or the access to all of that gear all the time. And so I didn't want this channel to turn into something that, uh, you know, people who don't have the resources to access that gear can't create good content. So lately I've stopped posting gear related videos. And as you can see, I'm still gaining views and subscribers from the gear related content, but my other content is not performing as well. Also during this time, around about April, I had my first brand ever reach out to me to post a video. Uh, and it was Musicbed, shout out Musicbed. They were my very first brand collaboration on this channel uh, ever, really. And so they saw a video that I posted comparing a couple music services and they reached out and asked if I wanted to try Musicbed. And I agreed and I do love the service. So I that posting for four months and then receiving brand recognition and a collaboration opportunity was incredible for me. So I continued to post weekly and that is from about April until really last month. I've had three to four other brands reach out. Brevity, I did a video for Raycon and there's another one in there, but I don't remember right now. And so in the back of my brain, it was like these, the consistency of posting the types of the, the type of audience that I'm attracting and that I'm building is working. And all of this culminates, all of this practice and posting and build up leads up until October 8th, 2024, when I woke up and saw that number of subscribers go from 900 something, 990 something. I sat there for about a week or two weeks to 1,004 subscribers literally overnight. And I mean this with so much love, but nothing changed. The type of content that performs is still the same. The number of views that I get, still the same. The person that I am, still the same. And I don't have the watch hours, so I'm not monetized. So what am I saying in this entire video? What's the, what's the point? I hate videos that are just like strictly update videos, which is why I wanted to give the history. But the update is what's, what's the fate of this channel? What am I doing here? My main mission is to make content for creators. That has not changed. What is going to change is the types of content that I make. Now, I still stand by, I don't want this to just be a gear review channel, but I am gonna be doing more gear reviews and more practical reviews, more reviews and education on things that creators who have some budget can do and some things that creators who don't have some budget can do. I've mentioned several tools and things along the way on this channel, but I really think it's time for me to go a little bit deeper and really show people how to do certain things instead of just talking about it. And so that's change number one. Change number two is I would love to work with more brands. Now, if you're a brand and you're watching this, um, my Ulanzi light video, not sponsored, completely not sponsored, blew up. You know, I have a video talking about the Tamron 17 to 70 lens. That video blew up. I have the potential to reach uh, people and audiences who are interested in interesting gear. My brevity bag video 
uh, it hasn't blown up in the sense of other people's video, but I know that there are people who watch that video who are interested in purchasing that bag and to know its usefulness. And so those are a few of the changes that I wanna make. Moving into some of the goals for the future of this channel, I would love to land a solid brand sponsorship. I have shown that I can show up consistently and make quality content and grow a channel. And so I would love to partner long-term with brands who want to invest in creating content for creators. I would also love to be invited and go on a Sony trip. Uh, I shoot mainly with Sony besides my drone um, and one other point and shoot camera, but Sony has been uh, the brand that I've stuck with, the brand that I've grown with. I've invested into the lens system, the camera system. I have three, three Sony bodies. I would love to be able to go on a Sony trip. And when everything boils down, the, the thing that I've learned in doing this, being here for 15 years, is that you need to love it or you need to fall in love with it. I don't think anyone does anything for 15 years unless they really enjoy it. And so the, the thing that I've learned this entire time is that video is a vehicle. It is, it was the vehicle that I used to start my love for music or grow my love for music. It's the vehicle I used to pick up cameras and learn more about them and increase quality and increase storytelling ability. And it has given me opportunities that I really could not dream of all because of a camera and falling in love with the process of creating and making videos and just learning more about storytelling. I've always been a storyteller. And I know that that's a buzzword right now, but someone in my life, my, my fifth grade teacher, shout out Ms. Moncrief, I told her that I wanted to be a storyteller, that I wanted to write stories. And over the summer, she wrote me a letter. After I, after I finished fifth grade, she wrote me a letter and I got it in the mail. And she basically said that she believed in me and that she believed in my ability to write stories and make stories and create stories. And so that has stuck with me forever. I'll never forget that. I think I still have the letter somewhere. I'm rambling, but I wanna wrap this up. If you want to get better, if you want to succeed at anything in life, it's gonna take time. And the fact that I've been here for 15 years and it's taken me 15 years to reach this milestone is a testament to my dedication, my passion, my love for this. And I know that people play the game and they uh, post things and they grow super fast, but there's, there's something to be said about growing slowly and learning over time and appreciating the journey along the way. Every video I post is a chance to connect with another person. Every video I post is a chance to tell an aspect of my story. And every video I post is a time capsule for my family for when I am inevitably not here anymore. So thank you everyone for sticking around. If you've made it this far in the video, you are a true champion. Thank you so much for being here. To anyone who has subscribed or is considering subscribing, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I know that there is another person on the other side of this. And if I can connect with one person and teach one person and help one person grow, then I've done my job with this video. So I would love to hear your YouTube journey down in the comments. Uh, I really appreciate you guys interacting with me and commenting. I respond to everyone that I can. And, you know, it, is, it has been a wild ride and we're just getting started. So again, thank you. As I like to say here, you need to do the work, believe in yourself, and most importantly, keep creating. Peace.